to another episode of History Saver 1941. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification as always so you get notified every time I upload. Thank you guys for supporting the channel and all of the content. And what do I have in front of me? I'm sure that's what you're wondering. Why is there a mess in front of you right now? Well, I was doing videos here on the channel where I was showing you guys kind of what I bought for each month and added to the collection here in the war room and for reenacting. And I, I kind of got away from that for a little while because I wasn't really buying as much and I've been busy. I haven't been home, home so it kind of died down a little bit. But I have picked up a number of different items, some of which are on this table and some which I probably have just forgotten I even picked up um, to show you or you've already seen it on the channel in some capacity. But these are the items that you have not seen. And these are the items I want to show you on this video and talk a little bit about. And the first is why I'm holding a big coiled up rope. Well, if you look at pictures of airborne troops during World War II, sometimes you'll see pictures with them carrying a rope. And this is basically what they were carrying. And it was a rope that they could use for just about anything. If they needed it to climb something, pull something, tie to something, well, they had it. And a lot of the guys, you know, tied this on the weather uniforms or packs and carried it with them. And this is where that rope comes from. I don't know if it's original. I don't think it is. Um, I picked this rope up actually from Jack. Jack was downgrading some stuff. And um, you've seen him here on the channel before. If you haven't, you can go back and watch some of those videos with him. Um, but one of my best friends, we reenact together and um, we have our unit together and he was downgrading and I was like, why not? Add it to the war room, add it to the collection. If I ever need it for an airborne depression, I have it. So I've got the rope. Now, the other thing I picked up is this very cool, and I actually picked this up yesterday. This is a very cool United States Navy gas mask bag from World War II. It is marked with the proper stamping. It has all the snaps with it, and it's very neat. It is, it has been used. It does have a very old smell to it, and I think it's actually been re-sewn re at some point um, on these straps, but that's okay because I think it's an old fix. But this, this is very neat. I really enjoy this. It has a lot of history behind it, and I'm going to be able to put this in the war room. I've always wanted one. And I can display this thing and actually use it for some events I have coming up where I need this for my impression. So, yeah, pretty cool United States Navy gas mask bag. I'm very excited to add to the collection here. Now, I also have picked up from Jack a airborne jump, um, airborne, airborne jacket. This is the... Um, basic jacket of the airborne troops during world war ii it is a reinforced version of the jacket this is a reproduction i think from at the front if i'm not mistaken and i've got the screaming eagle patch on as well as the american flag i'm not going to unfurl it because there's really no point and it's pretty hard to put this thing back together i do have the pants to this thing as well but there's a lot of components to an airborne uniform um airborne troops man they had a lot of pieces that same to their uniforms. So, but yeah, um, I've been putting together an airborne impression for quite a while. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it accurately and have everything I need for it. So, and it takes a pretty good while to get all that together for this thing. And it is not cheap. It is not cheap at all. And um, so, yeah, this has come from Jack, so it's got some meaning from it. And i uh, kind of keep it going. Um, we also have from Jack, the airborne jump boots. These are the infamous jump boots you see the airborne troopers wearing during World War II. These are reproductions, and they are brand spanking new. Jack has, think, I think, worn these maybe once, if that. Um, they are freaking new. The bottom of them, don't, it doesn't even have dirt on the bottom of these things. I don't even know if he's worn these things, honestly. Uh, the laces are, I mean, everything's brand new. This is a brand new boot. Um, the jump boots for the airborne troopers and why do I have Pringle cans shoved in the top of it? Jack actually did that. Blame him. No, uh, seriously, Jack shoved those in there to help keep the boot shape so it doesn't smash and it actually works great. So 
if you're a reenactor and you do airborne impressions and you're wanting to keep your boots upright and not have the um, leg of them all smashed up, Pringle Pringles cans, they work wonders. And uh, yeah, so pretty cool. I left them in there and I'm going to leave them in there because that works wonders. I'm actually going to do that with a lot of my other boots, I think, as well. I did also pick up a helmet from an antique store recently. This is a naval helmet uh, from World War II, U.S. Navy helmet. This is more than likely a damage control helmet uh, because of the red paint on it. The red paint is original. It is a front seam helmet. It is from World War II. Um, it is swivel bell, however, but it is front seam. And this helmet, I guarantee you, has not been used since World War II. All the paint's original, and there's even some numbers um, or something still on the side here that I can very faintly see. You're not going to be able to tell it on camera. But, um, yeah, it's pretty neat. Now, the guy at the antique store told me that he actually got this helmet from a junkyard. Somebody was going and threw it away, and he got it, and I bought it for 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks, uh, something like that. But um, And I will not use this re helmet for reenacting. You could put a cover over this and use it for Marine Corps if you wanted to for your shell, but I'm not doing that. Um, it's going to be on a permanent display here in the war room. So pretty cool, pretty cool helmet. And I love helmets, I love collecting helmets. Anytime I find a helmet I can buy, I pick it up. Reproduction or real, I mean, I don't care. I love helmets. So, yeah. Speaking of, Jack was getting, uh, give, getting rid of two helmets. I cannot talk today, I don't know why. But he was getting rid of two helmets. I bought both. One is an MP helmet, but I have put a US Marine Corps cover over the top of it to use it for a Marine Corps helmet because you won't be able to see the MP and no one knows that the MP is stamped on the helmet if it covers over it. So I like the helmet and I wanted it to serve for my Marine Corps helmet. So that's what is happening with that one. This helmet come from J.M. Murray Company. That, that company is probably, if you're getting in, into reenacting or looking at getting into reenacting or wanting a helmet, that is probably the best place to get a helmet from reproduction or refurbished originals, which is what this helmet is. I have loved this helmet since Jack got it, and um, I wanted it, and I finally, he was getting rid of it, and I said, well, I want it. And it's got the original liner in it. It's just an outstanding helmet. And um, yeah, it, it's really neat. I can't wait to actually use this thing. So uh, thank you, Jack, for this, and uh, if he ever wants them back, well, guess what? I've got my best friend's stuff in my collection, and all I have to do is hand it back to him. So, you know, that's another cool aspect of it, and it gives it more personal meaning to me. Now, another thing I picked up from Jack, yes, I picked up a lot of things from Jack. I actually traded him another bayonet for this bayonet. This is an original M1 Garand bayonet. This is the short version. I had a long version. He wanted the long version, so we traded and this has all the ordnance stamps on the sheath. And it's got the uh, making stamp, maker stamps on the sheath as well. And it's also stamped on the blade right above the hilt of the handle here. And it also is stamped with a serial number on the handle. And yeah, this is a cool bayonet. It's got bake, uh, bake light or bakelite grips. And you know, I will use this for reenacting. Um, these things come in handy. I've never fixed a bayonet on my M1 Garand for a reenactment ever for anything in all the years I've been doing that because it's basically not allowed. Um, unless you're doing a certain impression and, uh, it's just not safe. So I'm going to probably sharpen this thing up a little bit because I do use it at reenactments to cut up a tomato or cabbage or something like that. It's not going to hurt the, um, a bayonet. It's not going to hurt the knife portion of it. You know, just don't go chopping on wood or rocks with this thing. I mean, I wouldn't do that. But um, I do use it to cut up like tomatoes or open a bag or something like that. So it, um, it comes in handy at events. Now, the last thing that's on the table that I want to show you, and I do have one more other thing that's not on this table to show you, but it's just too heavy to put here, is a collection of photographs that I picked up at an antique store a couple of weeks ago, they are German photographs. 
So I'm going to warn you, you're going to see some Nazi party signs on these photographs. You're going to see some things that some people may not want to see. Um, but these are historic photographs that are all original of German soldiers during World War II. And anytime I find original photographs of any kind, I pick them up because this is, this is one of my favorite things to collect because it, it's history that's been frozen in time. Um, and you can learn a lot from them. So yeah, I'm, um, I'm going to show you some of these photographs. First one is of a, um, Nazi party, someone, we don't know who he is. It's just a guy, but he's wearing a Nazi party badge. So he was a member of the Nazi party of some sort or a supporter of the social, of the socialist government. <coughs> Excuse me. The next photo is a couple of German soldiers. Looks like they're standing by a ferry, nothing on the back. Um, just a very cool photo. Um, and I think it's Agramine troops. Another photo is of some Kriegsmarine guys. Now the guy in the middle, I don't know if he's a Kriegsmarine or if a regular Wehrmacht soldier, but these guys could be brothers. There's nothing on the back written, but it is a neat photograph. Here's a, another photograph of a Kriegsmarine, and um, there is a name on the back of this, but I can't really read it. Another Kriegsmarine photograph. This one is dated on the back with writing in the stamp, and it's dated 1937 as stamp. But a Kriegsmarine sailor, and I really can't tell what the name is. I haven't really looked at the writing good enough on these yet. Um, I've just kind of bought them and put them in here and haven't touched them since because I haven't had time. Here's another Kriegsmarine sailor here. It is a completely different sailor. It's not the same one you just saw. Nothing is written on the back. Now, this card, I believe, is a in memoriam card or a death card. Um, really not 100% sure. I've got to transcribe the writing on the bottom. Nothing is written on the back, but you do see the soldier with flowers, which is usually a memorial type thing. Here's a Chris Marine sailor with his wife and baby. Nothing is written on the back. Here's another Craig's Marine Sailor, and this is dated 1943, January, um, but I cannot make out the name of the soldier, or sailor, excuse me. This is another photograph of two soldiers in gear. Very cool photo. It has a letter written on the back in uh, postcard style, and this is dated 1940. So this was prior to the bombing on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. And this was, you know, in the early few year stages of the war. So very cool photo. Here we have two officers. And this photo is undated, but a very cool photo. <clears throat> Here we have another officer and it has the photo place stamped on the back. But uh, again, a very cool photo. This is dated 1943. This is another photo. It is dated 1940, and it shows a soldier standing outside of a guard shack. This is one of the only photos like this I have ever seen anywhere, and a very cool photo. And he's got a shovel, as you can see. So maybe they were doing some work or building this place, and he posed in front of the guard shack. Uh, very cool photo. This photo is my absolute favorite from this collection. And this is, I, I believe, Algermine troops during the early stages of the war in formation. And you could tell that by the stamps on the helmet, which you cannot see on this video. You have to really zoom into this photograph to see that. And um, actually, I had to get a magnifying glass to be able to tell that. But this is a extremely neat photo. And yeah, it's just very cool. Um, this is an officer posed by a car. This is dated 1943. And the officer's name is on here, but I can't really make it out at this moment. This is a photograph of a Fossum Jaeger soldier, and it is dated 1944. Again, it has some more writing that I need to transcribe later. This is a photo of a common Wehrmacht soldier, um, I believe, and it was taken by... Carl Strauss and Abba Sweller. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but that is the stamp on the back from the photo company. 
This is an undated photo of another officer, probably somewhere in Russia, uh, judging by the architecture. Uh, that would be my best guess. But those photos are very cool. They're part of history, and I like collecting those because they tell a story. They're very personal, and you can learn a lot from photographs. So, yeah, it's pretty cool to save that part of history and to add that to the collection here so that you guys can enjoy it here on the channel. Now, for the last item I mentioned that's not on this table. This thing weighs 50 pounds. It's not a World War II item. I'll go ahead and give you that hint now. And it is a military history item. It predates World War II. It was used in combat, and it weighs 50 pounds. Let's see if whatever you are thinking and trying to guess right now is correct. And let's look at our last item on this episode of History Saver 1941. Okay, I could not move this cannonball, if you guess cannonball, you were right, to the um, display table because, quite frankly, it'll fall straight through and I don't want to break my table with an original cannonball from the Civil War. This cannonball was dug in Blakely, or around Blakely, Alabama, Spanish Fort, Alabama, and it is remnants of the Confederate cannonball that was fired there during the siege of Spanish Fort in April of 1865 or it also could have been fired late March of 1865. This was the site of the last major battle of the American Civil War, and it is just absolutely freaking neat. Um, I picked this up yesterday, and as you can tell, it is heavily pitted, but it is original, and I guarantee you this thing is very heavy. And it just brings into perspective, if you were to get hit by this cannonball in battle, I, I couldn't imagine the damage it would do. And it, it, it kind of lets you see when these things actually hit the ground and explode. And this is a solid shot. There's no fuse in this. There's no explosives inside of this one. When these things exploded and scattered into thousands of pieces, it, it kind of seeing this, feeling this ball, holding this ball, kind of puts it in perspective of why guys died from these things and why these things took off heads and arms and legs. Because I guarantee if I was to drop this on my foot right now, it would probably chatter it. Um, it is extremely heavy. It is pitted. It is flaking a little bit. It was dug out of the ground and it is a very cool piece of history. So this cannonball was actually fired at the Battle of Spanish Fort in 1865 of March or, or April. When you have items like this, this is the reason why I do what I do. And the reason why I like bringing these items to you guys to see is because this is a witness to history. This was, this is a piece of history right here. Um, how many people could say they have a cannonball? I mean, how many people could say they've held a cannonball? How many people could say they've, you know, actually seen a real cannonball? If this cannonball could talk, imagine the stories it would tell. But yeah, this thing is extremely huge. And yeah, yeah, um, let's leave that there. I gotta figure out what to do with the thing. It can't just sit on my desk forever. So um, yeah, I've gotta figure it out. You know, I would give this thing away to one of you guys, but, but there's no way I'm gonna ship this thing. Sorry, um, sorry to everyone, but you know, I did consider it and I was like, you know what, there's just no way. Uh, I could barely pick the thing up as it is. There's no way I'm shipping this thing. So there you go. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Keep preserving history just like this and stay safe. We'll see you soon.